In this video, we will discuss the pathological features of pneumonia. Now, based on the pattern of involvement, pneumonia is classified into two types, lobar pneumonia and bronchopneumonia. So basically, in lobar pneumonia, the pattern of involvement is such that one complete lobe or one part of lobe is involved. As the pathological changes are confined to lobes, so we call this as lobar pneumonia. Now, lobar pneumonia itself has four stages, stage of congestion, stage of red hepatization, stage of gray hepatization, and stage of resolution. The first stage is stage of congestion and the gross features in this stage is congestion of lungs which makes the lungs slightly red and a small amount of edematous fluid also leaks into alveoli so lungs become heavy, bogey and red. Similarly on microscope you see vascular engorgement as you can see here in this diagram. Secondly at this stage as the inflammation has just begun and congestion has just been started so a small amount of fluid and neutrophils leak from these congested capillaries into the alveolar spaces. So in alveolar spaces you see small amount of exudate in form of fluid and neutrophils. Now the second stage of pneumonia is called stage of red hepatization. Red implies that the affected lobe of lung will become dark red and hepatization means that the affected lobe of lung will have liver like consistency. Now why would we call this as liver like consistency? Basically, you know that liver is a solid organ which does not contain air and lungs are balloon-like organs that are full of air. But what happens in this stage of pneumonia is that there is so much edema in alveoli that they become soft and liver-like in texture. That's why we call it as hepatization. You can see here in this diagram, a lobe of lung is affected, so this is lobar pneumonia and the part of affected lung is red and soft or liver-like in consistency. So we call it as stage of red hepatization. Now for microscopic features as there is massive exudation, so in alveoli you see red blood cells, neutrophils and fibrin material. Here in this diagram you can see that red circles that are actually red blood cells and these blue nuclei which represent neutrophils. Along with this there is pink colored fibrin rich edema fluid. Now the next stage of lobar pneumonia is called stage of grey hepatization. In this stage the affected lobe becomes grey colored. Because the red blood cells are degenerated by this time, so it becomes grey in color instead of red. But as the edematous fluid is still present, so there is still liver-like consistency, so we call it as hepatization. So this is the stage of grey hepatization. And you can see here in this diagram that this one lobe of lung has become grey colored. For microscopic features, you know that red blood cells have been disintegrated up till this stage. So the only thing you see in alveoli is fibrin and neutrophils. This collection of fibrins and neutrophils is called fibrinoseparative exudate. In this diagram, you can see fibrin and neutrophils. So this is fibrinoseparative exudate. Now the last stage of lobar pneumonia is stage of resolution, in which edema resolves. So lungs become aerated or air filled again, and the texture of lungs again become normal. And in microscopic view, you see resolving edema with degenerated granular debris some of which usually get expectorated through sputum later. And by this stage, few macrophages are also present in the alveoli. The duty of these macrophages is to clear up all the waste by phagocytosis and this is how the resolution of lobar pneumonia happens. So in stage of resolution, at microscopic level you see granular or semifluid debris, you see few macrophages and you see resolving edema. And obviously, once the stage of resolution will be completed, the lungs and alveoli become very normal in their structure. Now let's briefly revise all the four stages of lobar pneumonia. In first stage of congestion, the main feature is congested vessels. In second stage of red hepatization, the main feature is present of red blood cells, neutrophils and fibrin in alveoli. In the third stage of grey hepatization, there is neutrophils and fibrin in alveoli. This is known as fibrinoseparative exudate. And in the last stage of resolution, there is granular debris with macrophages that gradually clean up all the stuff. Now the second pattern of pneumonia other than lobar pneumonia is bronchopneumonia. And in bronchopneumonia, instead of involvement of one lobe, there is patchy involvement of entire lung or even both lungs, as you can see here in this diagram. So what is the difference between lobar pneumonia and bronchopneumonia? In lobar pneumonia, the only one particular lobe is affected. But in bronchopneumonia, the effect is at level of whole lung in the form of patches. And this patchy involvement usually affects the lower lobes of lungs. 
Now on microscopic view, the main feature is neutrophil rich exudate in alveoli. So in bronchopneumonia, there is no specific stage. The only feature is neutrophil rich exudate in alveoli. Now up till this point, the pathological features that we studied were confined to bacterial pneumonia. But now we will study the specific features of viral pneumonia. The gross features in viral pneumonia are same as that of bacterial pneumonia. That is, red blue areas of congestion and lobar or patchy involvement. Lobar as in lobar pneumonia and patchy as in bronchopneumonia. Now the microscopic features of viral pneumonia are different and distinct from bacterial pneumonia. So you need to listen to it carefully. We studied in bacterial pneumonia that the alveoli get filled with edematous fluid and blood cells. But in viral pneumonia, the respiratory membrane or alveolar lining is not severely damaged. So edema occurs only in the alveolar septa and there is no exudate in the alveoli. Also, as in viral infections, the inflammatory cells are lymphocytes and macrophages. So instead of neutrophils, you see these mononuclear cells that are lymphocytes and macrophages. At last, in few exceptional cases, the viral pneumonia becomes so much severe that there is diffuse alveolar hemorrhage in alveoli. But this is rare, you usually don't see this stage. So overall on microscopic features of viral pneumonia, you see edema that is confined to alveolar septa and is not present in alveolar spaces. You see mononuclear cells that are lymphocytes and macrophages in alveolar septa and you don't see neutrophils. Thirdly, there is no exudate in alveoli because in viral pneumonia the changes occur at the level of alveolar septa. So this concludes our discussion on pathological features of pneumonia.